children's rights are the civil, political, economic, social and cultural rights that all children everywhere are entitled to, as set out in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child. These rights include the rights to an education, to play, to access health care, to have a voice, to be protected from violence and abuse, and to have an adequate standard of living. All children have the same rights, no matter where they live or who they are, no matter their race, no matter their sex or any other status. A child is a child. Plan International was actually founded during the Spanish Civil War, so its origins are in the 1930s. It was set up in 1937. Um, it was a British war journalist, John Langdon Davies. Mm -hmm. He was in Spain and he came across a young boy about six years of age who had a note pinned to his clothes from his father and his father had known that he was going to be killed or shot um, and he basically asked for protection for his son um, in that, wow. so John Langdon Davies. So we mentioned children's rights of course and uh, yours is very girl focused but can you tell us some of the issues that you guys are assisting with? So really at the core of our work, as you said, is ensuring that girls can learn, lead, decide and thrive in all aspects of their lives. And the way that we see um, that is one of the key ways that girls can access their rights mm. and fulfil their potential is if they can access education. Yes. So throughout their lives. So really a core programmatic focus for us is um, ensuring that girls have access to quality, inclusive and participatory education mm. as well. Um, and that really, really helps with their futures, obviously. Yeah. Um, and one of the, I suppose, one of the key things that's come up in Plan International's work over the past few years is crises, how they're becoming, you know, conflict, insecurity, all of these things are becoming increasingly complex, protracted, um, ongoing cross-border mm -hmm. and they're really really impacting on, gr on girls yes. ability to access education and access their mm -hmm. rights. Look, how have things changed because obviously you will come up against um, cultural and religious and kind of traditional challenges you know and thinking as far as the position of a girl or a young woman in society how do you kind of get around that because it is a very sensitive topic for some yeah, I think no matter where you go in the world, there are gendered norms and mm. stereotypes that will hold girls and women back. And in some parts of the world, unfortunately, they have more of an impact yes. on girls and women than, than they would here, for example. Mm. Ireland is a melting pot of many different cultures, so has FGM kind of made its way here as well? Um, there have been cases of FGM reported in Ireland. Um, there was one very high profile case a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. a um, a conviction and outcome in the um, in the judicial system for that case, um, and of course, period poverty is huge all over the world. Um, what, what, what have you guys experienced with that, with your work in period poverty? Period poverty, as we would say, it's an issue that is impacting um, girls and women from Tipperary to Timbuktu, Kerry to Kampala. Like, yes. it's it's an issue that is. Um, widespread around the world and really we look at period poverty through um, a certain lens. We would see um, three core issues mm -hmm. around period poverty that we would call the toxic trio of period injustices. With, with the youth here as well, can they get involved um, if they want to? Obviously uh, they can get involved as well with the issues here, there's period poverty here as well. You mm -hmm. know? But how can they, they um, get involved with Plan International and have a voice? I think Irish youth in the last few years have become so politicised and mobilised on issues that are um, affecting their lives. And I think we saw that especially with marriage equality and repeal, yes. um, how you know that younger generation were really, really engaged on topics. And with Plan International, one of the things that I love is that we work in countries overseas, but we're also working here yes. with youth. So um, at the core, really, of our youth work is making sure that we work with and not just for young people. I'm also on the issue of online gender-based violence. Yeah, that's um, become a thing. I mean, gender-based violence, you always kind of think of the action of it, mm -hmm. but like you say, it's, it's online as well, and it's very damaging. Hugely damaging, yeah. um, especially within the last year or two, rates of online abuse and gender-based violence have skyrocketed, um, because the reality is as, more women and girls and vulnerable people spend time on 
line so to do the people who are willing to abuse them and yes. exploit them. Yeah. Um, so here in Ireland we did a survey last year of um, young people and we found that 67% of the girls and young women we had surveyed had experienced um, online abuse or harassment. Um, and it's having a huge impact mm. on their self-esteem, on sure. their mental health, on their relationships, on their school, mm. yeah. all of these things. And